Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to another episode of This Is My Offer. Uh, it's my, my name is Ajit Kole. I'm the worldwide partner leader for the automotive segment within Amazon Web Services. We have a distinguished guest today from our one of our premier partners, uh, Mani, and I'll let him introduce himself. Thank you, Ajit, uh, for having me here. Uh, this is uh, Mani Content. You can call me Mani. And I manage the uh, manufacturing vertical globally for Tech Mahindra. I've uh, been in this space for about uh, 20 plus years, uh, working across both the discrete and process manufacturing side, and uh, very happy to be here today. Great. Uh, welcome to the show, Mani. Uh, now, one of our very fascinating things that we have been working for some time now is factory of the future. So can you give us a little bit of perspective on the industry and what customer demand prompted the creation of factory of the future? Yeah, so... Uh, so Ajit, uh, if you look at the lineage which we come from, we are a core industry manufacturing group. Um, uh, you know, the group itself is focusing on different aspects of manufacturing, whether it is automobile, whether it is uh, farm equipment. Um, in fact, we are the largest manufacturer of tractors by volume in the world. Um, so the core manufacturing and engineering DNA being the uh, uh, you know, the fundamental crux of the uh, offerings which we have for the market. Uh, for our own existence, it is important that we continue to become more efficient, become more innovative. And that's what led us to really looking at adoption of, um, you know, factory uh, future or industry 4.0 at scale. And uh, today, if you see, we've, we've kind of um, traversed that journey over the last uh, seven plus years, and uh, we found some success. And and as more and more um, of our customers learned about that journey of ours, there was very keen interest of them also to partner with us. And that's how this whole offering came into being for Tech Mahindra. Oh, that's fabulous, right? So working backwards from the customer directly and having a, a place to may, may make it happen. So. Uh, more on that, can you drive a little bit deeper in what is the offering actually about, if you can decompose it so that our audience can understand it better? Sure. So what we did was uh, when we looked at, um, um, you know, uh, the factory of future, a smart factory as an offering, we look at six key aspects of a factory. Uh, one is how do we really improve uh, the quality of the product which is being manufactured? How efficient is the overall production itself, uh, right? Um, then how do we really improve uh, the reliability of the equipment uh, on the shop floor? Um, obviously, we, from our perspective, uh, some of the key aspects of any manufacturing is influenced through the supply chain. So how mm -hmm. predictive is our supply chain becomes a very critical factor. Um, and all of this can happen only with the people on the ground. So how, how do we really manage the workforce in a more uh, digital, um, um, you know, with more digital intervention? So what we call as a digital workforce overall. And obviously all this today has to be done in the most sustainable way. And that's where a green factory, um, you know, dimension comes into. So for us, uh, you know, the factory of future is across these six dimensions, robust quality, um, efficient production, a reliable equipment, mm -hmm. uh, predictive supply chain, digital workforce, and green factory. So yeah. those are the key uh, dimensions for us. Well, this is really fascinating, and it covers almost a 360-degree view when we talk about factory of the future. It is not just smart manufacturing, but the end-to-end -end view around how can we have a place humming. So super excited to hear about the six different components. Now, hey, can you actually show us some insights on how it works? So we would love to see the offering in action. Sure. Um, so I just have a slide, so probably I'll just bring it up. Um, if you really see the, the different um, you know, dimensions, I'll start with um, you know, the, the quality. Mm -hmm. Uh, the way we've designed it is that um, you know no fall forward as a as a as a concept and as a theme being implemented across. So especially in our factories where we operate a whole lot of complex modules of the whole uh, you know manufacturing process, we really look at uh, how do we really control 
the quality of the product by design at the line itself so that uh, you know that can be that can ensure that the end output which is coming out of at the end of the line is of uh, you know the highest quality that would mean um, you know the processes which are defining at the line where the different equipments which are used by the operator on the ground are smart enough to ensure that uh, we don't have any breaks in terms of our quality parameters so here you see as an example is a complex module which is primarily being um, you know as the fitting is happening on the line the operator missing a particular mount and the line is smart enough to kind of uh, notify that to say that hey what is actually parameter is set is eight whereas in reality only seven is complete so the line kind of pauses there momentarily till the operator takes a has that intervention it also gives a visual cue so most of our actual tools which we have in the factory line whether it is our um, you know inspection tools whether it is our go you know the different gauge tools what we have we capture the data we essentially send it back to a central platform and uh, we do different types of analytics in this case you see we also do for a regular process the complete visual analytics where for example here the worker is actually applying the sealant now you see the green line out there uh, which today uh, you know we have the, uh, the typical camera based visual capture of the activity itself and if the that particular process is not correct uh, it will automatically highlight a red and uh, it will again guide the worker but if it is a green where uh, you know the worker has followed all the steps it it would uh, ensure that you know that process is complete in all aspects so this whole uh, thing is completely connected you can see now it is highlighted as red and mm -hmm. as the worker would go in and fill those gaps automatically uh, you know it would turn into a green so this is to kind of show you uh, how we have connected or used technology so you can see those gaps now the moment he fills the sealant where those, those gaps are automatically we get a visual cue of a green these are kind of embedded within the line like this we have done more than 70 plus different use cases mm -hmm. where across the line the line inspection happens if anything um, you know is is not correct then those quality gates are essentially set based on which uh, we are able to do here again you see another use case where we completely scan the whole complex part of the module and right. really check for the inspection it gives us a real time feedback and once we have that uh, the line moves forward this is we also have integrated the robotic online inspection completely so this is the um, you know the 360 degree um, you know inspection of the vehicle in body in white form um, and wherever those gaps are uh, that's kind of getting uh, highlighted because those are not something which we can um, kind of uh, manually track it uh, so this kind of gives us complete control on our production process mm -hmm. thereby we improve uh, you know the quality and only when uh, the final quality gate sticker is kind of at the end of the line having all green is when the vehicle gets uh, you know moves into the next phase uh, in the production line and that's how uh, we ensure that uh, you know a simple uh, process is followed from a quality perspective uh, if you look at our equipment reliability mm -hmm. we capture uh, you know the different parameters of uh, equipment um, we do the tbm based on the data and uh, based on that there is a significant amount of analysis done uh, in terms of uh, the equipment maintenance as well as uh, the different reasons as to why the uh, you know the whole um, uh, the stoppage is happening mm -hmm. and uh, based on that corrective actions are taken um, right and uh, that essentially leads to uh, you know our maintenance schedules as well especially mm -hmm. the planned maintenance schedules uh, that way we avoid the unplanned uh, events uh, on the line for our different equipments. So those are some of the, the different use cases which we have built. Um, this is yet another one from a workforce perspective. Typically, we capture um, the skills of the workers um, and uh, we do what is called as a, a five by five concept of five by five for critical workstations, which is five workstations, five critical skills, um, and a three by three for uh, the normal workstations. So for critical stations, it is five top skills. 
and uh, for um, you know regular workstations it is three skills and we ensure the availability of uh, you know the 5 by 3 skilled work at any any uh, stage of the um, you know the, the production planning so when uh, the worker is coming in for the day automatically uh, as they punch in based mm-hmm. on the skill uh, they get allocated to that respective workstation so we do the complete automated work allocation over here so when they punch in for the day uh, you know depending upon the skill and which would be that the the workstation which is uh, fit for that particular worker is auto assigned through a recommendation engine and that kind of gives us the uh, you know the flexibility mm-hmm. this is on the energy management side if you see uh, we again do the very similar activity we capture the complete um, you know uh, the carbon emission uh, the complete um, data across the different consumption whether it is directly from the grid as well as from the different um, equipments as well as the lines uh, mm-hmm. all of that primarily comes together into a single system and we are able to monitor uh, um, uh, you know the whole energy consumption the other thing is we do a camera based pp detection for safety okay. reasons so you can see that a lot of visual analytics at play over here um, you know where we uh, capture any um, you know pp equipment which is not uh, you know adhered to and uh, that whole process um, um, is picked up we are also recording this whole thing so which also gives us uh, uh, you know any repeat offenders uh, who do it uh, mandatory or on purpose are kind of pulled out and given more coaching and training so that safety is being reinforced so these are some of the uh, uh, you know different ways how we have managed to kind of bring all of this together into mm-hmm. one single unified platform we call that as uh, drona and uh, this is essentially our way of ensuring that the factories become a um, lot more reliable lot more efficient and um, and we continue to innovate uh, on a day to day basis so that um, we are truly adapting to the industry 4.0 Uh, principles across <clears throat> this is super fascinating to hear right so all the way from connecting from shop floor to top floor understanding the end to end risk that is going on on the ground as well as driving efficiencies across the entire plant very fascinating to hear now uh, you know if somebody starting fresh right they start on from a what we call traditionally as a brown field an existing uh, shop floor or a green field Uh, how can they engage with you and what's the process you go around to make this happen yeah so uh, in case of a green field what we do is um, typically we help our customers from um, from planning to commissioning is what you say mm-hmm. um you know when an, when a plant is coming up especially a new plant today uh, we are able to help them coherently in terms of all aspects of their planning whether it is supply chain whether it is their inbound outbound logistics or the planning which is required whether it is their apo side whether it is their worker side right how do you really prepare a skill data and also look at it from a work uh, you know at the at the workshop or at the line level planning so there's a lot of activity which needs to be done of course we do a lot of um, today using the digital twin uh, we are able to simulate our build the mm-hmm. whole uh, factory today completely online and uh, we are able to build at scale so that kind of gives our customers a, re- a complete uh, feel of the factory operations before they actually build and we take it all the way and we help them uh, till the commissioning so that's our planning to commissioning cycle mm-hmm. which we do. we do core consulting helping our customers uh, you know drive that we also have a complete set of partnerships um right whether it is um with uh, the different um robots cobots um, um suppliers whether it is to do with the industrial automation platforms mm-hmm. um whether it is the network uh, enablement which is required because as you know tech mahindra serves a very large um, um you know for uh, community of uh, customers who come from uh, the telecom background or the communications background Yeah. so we offer it as an end to end system integrator to mm-hmm. provide that full solution from a greenfield um 
But when it comes to a brownfield, mm -hmm. uh, what we really do is we start with a typical assets assessment. We mm -hmm. do what is called as a three by three by three approach. Um, we spend about three days um, with our customer on the shop floor. We do the gemba. Uh, we actually understand the real problem for them, um, and we try to prioritize the the different use cases and clearly map out what would be that low hanging um, you know use case which would give them quick mm -hmm. benefit. Because our feeling is. Uh, it is not just a technology intervention, right? right. It is a combination of uh, what we call as uh, uh, TPM, the lean and SMT coming together mm -hmm. and continuous institutionalized learning which needs to happen. And that's the whole approach for our um, you know, factory of future. So Got we it. combine these together. Uh, and in case of a brownfield, we do the assets assessment. Mm -hmm help prioritize, uh, build the uh, different use cases mm -hmm. and uh, kind of uh, implement, uh, you know, maybe a proof of concept or a pilot in one of the, um, you know, prioritized areas. And then we take it to scale uh, depending upon how this happens in real life, right? And the beauty is the type of partnerships which we bring in. For mm -hmm. example, with AWS, um, you know, we do significant amount of partnership where Especially if you have to do on edge work, the visual analytics work, the um, you know taking the whole data and putting it on cloud to do the all types of um, the AI based modeling which we want to do. And today we are also exploring the Gen AI use cases. It right. kind of gives uh, our customers the whole spectrum of possibilities today uh, in this journey, and um, it also gives them today uh, the customers are able to accelerate this mm -hmm. whole journey so what we're really talking about is scale at speed yep. um, so from the traditional poc purgatory today uh, the customers are looking at uh, you know speed at uh, at scale and that's right. what um, uh, you know we are enabling for our customers Yep, that's great. And uh, I've been intimately involved in how we actually reviewed all the solutions, went, went through foundational technical reviews. So they're all set to go for our customers. So again, Mani, thank you so much for joining this uh, episode of This Is My Offer. And with that, we will conclude today's session. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ajit.